What's up, family? Welcome back to another legendary Top of the Moon reaction video. Give this video a big thumbs up. It helps crush that YouTube algorithm. It's totally free. Every single one of you is a blessing. You are amazing. You heard that from your boy. And comment down below any legendary Top of the Moon reaction videos you guys want to see. Let's go. Boy, I thought he was a very beautiful and still is. Uh, My boy Al Green. Uh, a very beautiful person and his memory shall probably forever live on. Well, you ain't never born a rabbit. You ain't no friend of mine. Here you go with the leg dance. There is no room in this city for the vulgar performances of Elvis Presley. It's shocking. I watched him gyrate his legs and swivel his hips. Yes, sir, he just did. And our parent-teachers group feels he should not be on television. We've uh, set up a 20-man committee to do away with the, this vulgar, animalistic, nigger, rock and roll bop. Are you serious, bro? Oh, watch your mouth, man. We all, you, we all together. We all equal. Doesn't matter the color, man. We all people. We are humans. Spread the love. Let the love supersede the hate, man. Our committee will check with the restaurant owners and the cafes to see what uh, Presley... See, this stuff right here is taught. You feel what I'm saying? When you come out as an innocent, innocent baby, all you know is love. Angelic. You're pure. See... This is divisiveness right here. Divisive. In a sense of splitting any person. I don't care if you blue, black, green, purple, yellow, white, green, crayon, whatever, Crayola. You could be a rainbow for all I care. Love is everything. The records is on their machines and then ask them to do away with them. You've learned anything from the criticism leveled at you? No, I haven't. You haven't, huh? Because uh, I, don't, I don't feel that I'm doing anything wrong. You ain't nothing but a dog Look rock and roll time Rock and roll has got to go And go it does at KWK How you destroy a such masterpiece We're all through playing rock and roll records This week is record breaking week here at KWK And after this week no more rock and roll will be played on the air The obscenity involved See, you can't break it, that's see what I'm saying? You can't break that second record How about that, partner? Can't break art. He's an artist, bro. He's creative with his music. Vulgarity of the rock and roll music is obviously a means by which the white man and his children can be driven to the level with a nigger. It is obviously nigger music. Everybody mostly turned him down. And uh, because first thing, he had Negro's ways. This is what they didn't really at that time. It was they didn't want to accept. By my man Stevie, um, black um, performers, and uh, he, in essence, uh, because of at that particular time the kind of backwards uh, mental capability that many people had as uh, judging a person because of the color of their skin, as somewhat still does exist, but back then it was uh, worse. And uh, he actually, because of uh, him being um, a Caucasian brother, he was able to uh, to do away with that whole thing. The 77-year-old early right, a disc jockey at radio station WROX in Clarksdale for 40... I feel like when you're a legend such as Elvis, legends just does something contrary to public popular opinion, right? But they stand enough for something that's different. They're not conformed. They're just different. And that's usually what comes with you being legendary and you leaving a legacy. You doing something opposite that no one thinks that would be possible to overcome or to push through. Or you have the courage to do it because life wants to break you, right? I realize good people, they always have challenges. But the challenges be bigger than their goodness because the greatness is to come. Five years. Hi there. Pleasant good evening, ladies and gentlemen. How do you do? This is your soul man to be with you until it get through. I want you to stand by. Don't have no fear. Following Jay's show, should I play one like this one from out of here? Elvis Preston. 
Hey. Elvis's songs still get good play on Wright's program among the blues, gospel, and jazz recordings that are its staples. It was almost 40 years ago when Elvis drove down to Clarksdale from Memphis with a record and asked him to play it. And I had been playing his record, and I had never seen him before, and I was amazed to see him. When he introduced himself to being Elvis Presley, then I went all the pieces over him. Then he and I started talking. I used to be the manager of a gospel group called the Four Star Quartet. And I could listen to a man uh, sing a hymn. I could listen to a man sometime talk. I did that. And I could pick him out whether he could fit in in my group. And talking to Elvis Presley, I could see a grand future in him. It's no accident that Wright recognized Elvis's strong gospel roots. Here at the East Trigg Baptist Church in Memphis, older members of the congregation remember Elvis joining in with the choir while in high school. That's cool. These were rousing sessions led by the charismatic pastor, the Reverend W. Herbert Brewster. Like most black people in the South, and to whose suit God has pressed down a half of a thousand strings, it only needed tuning. Elvis's voice was that type of voice that agreed with the thought of Calvary. He had that kind of bent and inclination and attitude. Attitude is everything. Attitude is more important than behavior. That suggested that God could use him. I gave the music a different approach, a new beat. I knew that it wasn't going to hurt if I said, Let's Jesus bear the cross alone, whether I said it with one beat, two beat, whether I said it high or low. And I told them, Come on in here and, and, and put your stuff together. <laughs> they came in here, and it was a glorious experience, and Elvis was in that group. That's Elvis so came out with a style of his own, and it, it was very creative. And once he got into it, and you, and you got that feel, Elvis just took off like a late freight. Mm -hmm. And with Elvis doing this kind of music, gave an injection to black music that no other artist had ever done. I feel as though Elvis just touched all type of music, from rock to hip hop to all types of genre. Like you cannot discredit this man because that's what artists do. He's an artist. He can dip and dab in different type of genre and the versatility is so legendary, bro. It's so impeccable. It's, it's, it's amazing. It was like an earthquake in my neighborhood. The whole place was shaking when he came on. And I said, how did a person possess that kind of power? See, I did have a music, music elective um, in community college. Um, I forgot what it's called. Um, back then, you know, it was like the blues and then, you know, the bass and, the you know, the dumping. I want to Google it real quick because... I feel like it's something touching me that I have to say that this is what making Elvis so legendary. Like, just hearing that little, as he was talking, as Bobby was talking. Um, I'm Googling the origins of blues. Like, um, styles. Yeah, so he did spiritual. I feel like he went from spiritual folk music to like cultural, like the deep south, and then like derivative forms like bluegrass, country jazz. Like that was more country, like like this right here. In my neighborhood, the whole place was shaking when he came on, and I said, "You yeah, in the background? They're like blues, like jazzy blues, right there to me." The person possessed that kind of power that it even comes off the TV and grabbed me in this ghetto neighborhood. Elvis took my two to fruity, and, and I was very disgusted. But by him saying it, he really made it bigger and made me bigger. During those days. You see, you all come together. We can all help each other. That's the problem. We all hinder each other when we don't help each other. It's like it's like a it's like you teaching a kid and y'all doing and one parent is teaching them this way, and another parent teaching, it's opposite parenting. You feel what I'm saying? So if we come together, we can all go in a direction where we only going to go up from here because the only way to go is up because we helping each other out of love, genuinely. Not loving for a benefit, but genuinely, lo genuinely loving each other. And we just naturally just pushing each other up. 
Elvis was free promotion for Richard. What you getting angry for? You know what I'm saying? If it's a white artist doing something, they would just say, they don't. The same way I'm a reactor. Oh, you, you're stealing people's content. You did it. I'm promoting, actually. I'm putting my intellectual input, breaking down the music or whatever that spiritually is being, being the message that I'm getting from it, breaking it down, creating this discussion with you guys, family. And we talk about it. Oh, you disagree? I agree. I get what you're saying. That's cool because now we're promoting this portion of music, but we're also having a conversation impacting each other to only go up positively. And for the haters, the haters is going to be who they are. You know what I'm saying? I don't like our blacks, and we don't like them either. He's nothing but a copycat. But he almost pressed me when he came on. Chicks were screaming and going crazy, and it was just it was like any other neighborhood. And I said, this guy's got something going, man. Elvis had something that made him sound like he truly meant it. Yeah, he made me want to eat some Fruit Loops, the way he jazzing like that. I got to react to that song, Tootie Fruits. Tootie Fruits. Tootie Fruits. Hey. And that's what made a lot of people like myself like him. I think Elvis had lots of soul. He appealed to black people. He definitely had to have soul in order to do that. I think there's ever been an artist that when his name went on the marquee, uh, they knew he was coming. People came from all over the world. I never, I never heard of that. Elvis do, did a lot of stuff that, you know, rappers do these days. Yeah, he had to blame. You gotta have to blame when you from there. Oh, my man is pimping and dipping and dabbing and pimping. You know what I'm saying? Tripping and pimping and tripping and pimping. You know what I'm saying? Look at the ring, bro. Look at it. Oh! He had the bling, you know, he had Cadillac, you know, he had like a gangster in him. As the snow flies on a cold and gray Chicago morning, a poor little baby child is born in the ghetto. The song also resonates with people who've only met Elvis through his songs. See? Impact of hip hop, man. He's a gangsterous. He got gangster writers in the rock and roll, man. He's a gangster writer's legend of rock and roll. Put it like that. Elvis Presley, man. I was talking about the hood. You know, they're talking about where we come from. Paul Beauregard and Jordan Houston are the Oscar-winning rap duo 3-6 Mafia. They grew up just two blocks from Graceland in one of Memphis's poorest neighborhoods. I want a CD scratcher. My mom used to always listen to this song when I was young. Uh, he talked about, you know, things that she went through. You know, she had like, you know, I'm only a bunch of kids, like nine kids. You know what I'm saying? That's how you uh, get somebody to listen to your uh, song. You talk about what they, uh, what they know about and what they want to hear. Mm -hmm. And she know about the ghetto because, you know, she lived in the ghetto. The ghetto. That's it. And his mama cries. But if there's one thing she don't need, it's another hungry mouth to feed in the ghetto. Facts. How do we find the part? Ooh, I gotta react to that. Tutti Fruity and Ghetto. On the record that we want to use, we're sampling into the drum machine or the keyboard. That way we can loop it. Like My first line says, first I'm broke, so I hang out with the rat and roach. It's still broke, so I'm sleeping on apartment floors. So it's just like the struggle, you know, what's going on in the hood. First I'm broke, so I hang out with the rat and roach. It's still broke, so I'm sleeping on apartment floors. And then you just put Elvis in the background. In the ghetto. That's a hit, bruh. And uh, I was off beat, but it's all good because it's on TV. Mm. <laughs> maybe, maybe do some edits. Make me look cool. Maybe put my name in the credits. <laughs> Once we have all that ready, you know, we uh, load it into the drum machine and then. Pay out. So he starts to roam the streets at night and he learns how to steal and he learns how to fight and begin to Survival is an everyday task Watch your back for the man wearing the mask I say I'm Hey, I told you, just put it in the background in the ghetto That's a hit, bruh Might get stuck If you in the hood looking like it came up We ride old school whips High off the ground right beside a plane I ain't gonna lie, I ain't really pay attention. I mean, the bar is hot, but I just like what Elvis said, how he said, when you get to. Shout out to Elvis, man. God rest your soul. Trapping, 
So help your brother along the way, no matter where he starts. But the same God that made you, made him too. See, that's that's why I love how you say that. The same God that made you. You know what I'm saying? Help your brother. Because we were made by a creator. So we should be creators because it was God originated. It's his originated spirit that creates, right? So we are met and designed to be creators as well. And also create a difference. And do something different. You know when you want to something great, a great idea, when something is constantly keep saying you can't do it, you can't do it. The constant rejection is only going to lead to you being able to do it. You just got to have that heart. You know when something you truly desire, when no matter how much you resist, it keep coming. It keep coming. These men with broken hearts. During the 60s and early 70s, when tensions between blacks and whites were at an all-time high, Elvis demonstrated his desire for racial reconciliation in the musicians that he chose and the treatment they received. There's a lot of guts. Oh, I hear the gospel with a soul in them, boy. Make me want to eat some soul food. Look at that. When we first decided to um, take the gig with Elvis, we had no idea that there would be any racial flack regarding it. Our first racial encounter was when we went to um, Texas. Elvis was told by his people that, well, you can leave the black girls home. You don't have to bring them. So Elvis wasn't going to do the Astrodome unless his girls could be with him. And he demanded that we be given the star treatment. We had to be in our convertible where everybody could see us <laughs> and our little blonde could drive us. <laughs> and um, that was his statement. You don't like it, deal with it, or I'm not going to be there. And I thought that was very big of him. When I joined the group uh, in 1972, uh, they took a big chance because there were no blacks in contemporary or Southern gospel uh, music. And I was the first one, and it made all the headlines and, and everything. It was in Billboard and all the newspapers in Tennessee. And my first uh, time meeting Elvis was, he had a, a, a folder full of clippings of uh, things that he had read about me. As a matter of fact, the Imperials brought me to his suite and he gave me this folder with all the clippings and he personally welcomed me into the family and for a guy. That's a real man right there. See, a lot of times people want to hide behind their phones and social media this day and age. Real men. Real women come face to face and they confront and they have a discussion civilly and what's needed to do so. You know what I'm saying? As a man, you confront each other. You don't hide behind your little phones and your little emails and your text messages. No. no call, don't call either. In person, physically. Handle it professionally. Right there, straightforward. Statement stands where it stands. Just like a covenant. I who you know, didn't really knew, know where he stood. This was very important uh, that he acknowledged my presence and, you know, made me feel very much a part of what we were all doing. And right away, he treated me like he'd known me for years. He gave me one of those TCB uh, yeah, chains and everything, cool. and I was just one of the guys, and, and I never forgot. Bro, I want that chain, bro. That chain, that chain now? As he was leaving his legacy, which was already being left anyway, during the process of him, you know, doing the legacy. Um, man, that changed the statue. Right? That. And I've been around him with people, other people of color, and I've only seen him give love. He very, was very generous to people that he didn't even know. You didn't have to be of any racial persuasion for him to love you. And you know, they ha you know how rumors get started mm -hmm. when there is a big star or something, the people will start rumors, well, he doesn't like this kind of people or he doesn't like those people or that people. And I never got that from him. See, that's what it is, lies, man. Lies can stir up a lot of confusion. That's only the enemy. The enemy tells you lies, and if you, it's up to you to let that in your heart. You guard what you let in your heart if you, let, if you allow it to. You know, Elvis, Elvis is a whole nother thing. It's just, I, I think it's scary to even be compared to people in that, like, 
You know what I mean? Because he's such a a big talent, and he's at, in his absence, he's of course he's bigger than in his presence. And music marks time. So in this time period, what Elvis was to his period would be something totally different. Well, I think rock and roll. I mean, is it what he brought to Vegas is more than rock and roll. I mean, I think there's so much going on out here on the entertainment front. Like right now, you'll see the likes of Celine Dion and uh, Tony Braxton. It's a lot going out here. You know what I mean? As far as rock and roll is concerned, it's great. I mean, Elvis Presley was able to do things that haven't been able to be duplicated to this day. Black American music influenced Elvis. The fact that people say, well, he's the king of it all, king of rock and roll. Um, it's a slap in the face to those that, that made the music possible in the first place. We're all kings and queens, man. Not to say he wasn't brilliant. I think he was a fantastic, talented singer. I don't think he ripped them off. I think once something has been exposed, anyone can add or take from it if they like. He was just so great, so popular. I always say, like, whatever you put out there, whatever you show, you know what I'm saying? You choose what you allow to be put out there. If you put yourself out there to be a bad person, you will be a seen that you will be a bad person. If you expose yourself in a light that's not good, then you allow that and you put that out there. It's like law of attraction, right? Whatever you put out there, it'll get back. Because if you put yourself out there to be something negative, negativity only comes back. But if you're putting out positive music with a message, anyone can put their own twist to it and your message adds to the original message. And just like... You know, listen to that song, In the Ghetto. I'm be like, yo, who sing that hook? Like, I'm really rocking with that. You know what I'm saying? So now I'm going to go find who was the originator of the song in the first place. And then Juicy J and them explaining in 3 Six Mafia, oh, this is who it came from. Oh, let me check out their music. So it's all helping each other. Help your brother. You know what I'm saying? Help your brother and sister. And faith, help them. Uplift, uplift each other. Build each other up. Don't break each other down. So hot, so anything that he played, it became a hit. To me, they didn't make a mistake when they called him the king. The only thing I want to know, was he my friend? Did I enjoy him as a performer? Did he give the world of entertainment something? Yes, on all counts. And that's the name of that tune. He was a bundle of energy set to music. And that echo will never die. Yep. Such a legend, man. Such a blessing to the world, man. Just like every single one of you are. Stay blessed, stay amazing. And whatever purpose and skill set you have, give it to the world. As you give generously, you receive back in abundance tenfold. You know what I'm saying? So stay blessed, stay amazing. If you're new to the channel, come join the channel. Hit that subscribe button. Turn your post notifications on. And let the love supersede the hate. Peace, family. I feel like this is a great black history project. And I don't even like Black History Month. It should go away. Just history in general for how far we come and how unity should be set. And this is the standard being set. You know what I'm saying? This is how it should be. Unity. Reconciliation. Differences of opinion help us to learn and grow.